Hi friends. How are you? Hope you're doing great. Guess what we're doing today? We're starting division with remainders. Licky licky. All right, babies. Division, what is division? It's when you take a group of something and you split it up into smaller groups, right? Right? Well, sometimes your groups don't get split up evenly. Sometimes you have a remainder. What is a remainder? Let's think of words that mean the same thing as remainder. Well, leftover. I have some leftover chicken in the fridge. I have a remainder of chicken in the fridge. That wasn't a good example. Anyway, leftovers, excess, the rest of something, um, the extra parts and pieces. All right, that's what a remainder is. That's your leftovers after you've divided everything up. Okay, so when you're working with remainders, there's three different things that can happen, three different scenarios with remainders. And you guys, being fourth graders, are going to learn what to do in each situation. All right, are you ready? Here's your situations. Oh. All right, so the first one here, ignore the remainder. Pretend like it's not there. So the answer to your problem is gonna be just the quotient, right? Quotient, that's the answer to the division problem. Pro tip, I don't think I can read that upside down or backwards. Use ignore it when you can't easily Divide the remainder and rounding up or adding does not make sense. Okay? Okay. Now, the use it. That's when just the remainder is your answer. Okay? So, for example, the pro tip is read carefully to determine if the question is asking for the quotient or the remainder. Ooh. And then we have one last scenario. Round it or add one to your um, remainder to get your answer. So round up at, to the next whole number. Pro tip, use round it when you can't leave people, animals, or places out. Okay? Okay. I'm going to hang this up. I forgot to use my big cute pencil. Oh well. I'm going to hang this up because we're going to be doing this for a few days and we'll come back to it. Okay? So I'm going to hang it up in this beautiful spot. Not that y'all can read it, which is a million miles away. But there we go. All right, friends. Now, I'm going to do a sample problem to show you what each one of these things looks like. Okay, I'm gonna read you this problem. Here we go. All right, there are 26 students going on a field trip. They will travel in vans that each hold six students. Okay, so 26 of you guys are going on a field trip and you're getting in a van and each van holds six kiddos. Okay, so we're taking 26 and splitting it up dividing it up into groups of six, okay? 26 kids, groups of six, go in a van, all right? All right, so 26 divided by six is four with a remainder with leftovers of two because six times four is 24, mm. but we can't, two's not gonna make up a full group of six, right? Right, so what if the question was, how many vans will be full? Hmm, well, how many vans? Our answer is four vans, right? We need four vans, but then we got two kids that are on the sidewalk. So the answer to this one, the ignore it, so we are not paying attention to this too. We only want to know the full vans. So four, okay? What if the question was, how many students will be in the van that isn't full? How many students will be in the van that is not full? Well, this tells us this four is saying, hey, we need four 
four bands for, that could fit six people, all right? Now, we got a leftover of two kids. So, we've got two kids that still need to be in a van, but is that van gonna be full? It is not, because each van can hold six, but we just have two kids left over. So, our answer to how many students will be in the van that isn't full is two. Example guys, how many vans will be needed for all the students? All right, how many vans will be needed for all the students? So here, we wanted to know how many vans will be full, okay? Here, how many vans will be needed for all the students? Well, can we leave these two students on the side of the road? Are we gonna make them walk? No, we're not, so we need four vans plus the one so these kids don't have to walk. So how many vans do we need? We need four plus one is four. Okay? Right on, friends. So that is what we are doing, guys. All right, we're working with remainders. Deciding what to do with the remainder. Are we going to use it? Are we going to ignore it? Are we going to add one to it, round it up? Okay, let's look at this example. A group of 37 students are sitting in the auditorium for a show. Each row must be filled before a new row can begin. If there are eight seats per row, how many rows will be full? Okay, read it once, go read it twice. A group of 37 students are sitting in the auditorium for a show. Each row must be filled before a new row can begin. If there are eight seats per row, how many rows will be full? All right, we read, we read. Now, what is this thing asking? What does it want to know? How many rows will be full? Do da, do da. How many rows will be full on the do da day? Okay, what info? Do we need to use to figure that out? Well, we've got 37 kids. And let's see, ooh, eight seats per row. All right, munchkins. So remember we've been talking about visualizing, drawing pictures to answer your word problems. Let's draw a picture. So I've got rows of seats, right? Here's a row. There's a row, everywhere is a row. All right, so I've got rows of seats, right? Each row has eight seats, okay? Now, I have 37 kids I need to put in these rows, but only eight kids per row, right? Because there's only eight seats, yep. So, let's see, I've got a kid here, one kid, two kids, Three kids, four kids, five kids, six kids, seven kids, eight kids. Is that eight kids? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, this row's got eight. Eight. So let's put eight on this row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus eight, or eight times two, 16, okay? Eight more kids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're at, uh, what is 16 plus eight, y'all? Four, eight times three. So now we're at 24. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All righty, now we've got four rows of eight, so that's 32. We gotta get to 37. Okay, so we're at 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. Oh, how many kids do I have in this row? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, that's not a full row. So our question is how many rows will be full? How many full rows do we have? This one's got eight. This one's got eight. This one's got eight. This one's got eight. This one does not have eight, all right? So we have one, two, three, four full rows. So our answer is four rows. Okay, now we drew a picture to solve this division problem, all right? What does this equation
equation look like? So we have 37 students, right? And we're splitting them up, we're dividing them into groups of what? Eight, groups of eight. We have eight seats, right? What is our answer? One, two, three, four. Four pools with a remainder of how many? One, two, three, four, five. All right, chaps. Ta-da! Welcome to Division with Remainders. You're welcome. Okay. Read your worksheet carefully, darlings. Focus on what the problem is asking you, okay? Draw pictures if you need to. Close your eyes, visualize. You're walking to the auditorium and you see her as a kid, okay? Very important. Read, read, read. Read again if you need to. Start with a question. Underline important. Solve that problem. Finish your worksheet. Do the exit ticket. I'll see you tomorrow.